Hello and welcome to the weekly wonders of Chris Evans' Best Bits, starring F1 world champion Lewis Hamilton, friend's favourite and star of silver screen Jennifer Aniston, princess of poets and strictly judge Darcy Bustle, and live music from Swedish superstars First Aid Kit. Today's download is dedicated to anyone who feels like the Trafalgar Square Christmas tree. It's up and it's not switched on. Joining us now is a bona fide Hollywood superstar who's been a friend of TV ouch, and uh, film fans for 20 years. She starred <laughs> in countless brilliant blockbusters and is the go-to gal for rom-com gold. Please welcome the ever-jubilant Jennifer Aniston. Wow. That was... Quite an introduction. Yeah, I think we should leave it there. Okay. I mean, yeah. Did yeah, you like explain Jen. something doing that <laughs> wonderful introduction? They make me do it, Jennifer. They make me do no, it. No, I get it. It's wonderful. So, Horrible Bosses 2, it was a two film day for us. We had to go and see yours and another one. Yours was by far the best, I have to say, Jennifer. What? Yeah. 10 o'clock in the morning, and we were still rolling in the aisles, oh, laughing away, I have to say. It is a funny one, I have to say. Those three boys are um, kind of comedy magic. Do you think comedy has got more hardcore? Maybe because, you know, leading the charge with a hangover. You know, comedy had to turn left or right. It couldn't carry on where it was. It's almost sort of stuck at a crossroads. The harder it got, the more course it's, it's got. I think it's better. And this sort of follows on with that theme, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Our boundaries have sort of broadened and we are allowed to kind of dip deeper into the dirty well, into the dark well of, of humor, which is, you know how we actually I think it's what audiences are, are responding to because we all have that dark twisted funny side to all of us <laughs> so it's fun to, and refreshing to see it on camera now just judging from the outtakes and I love don't you love it when they put the outtakes at the end of a film isn't that it's, all films I should do. do that shouldn't they I agree For I think sake. it's so fun and yes. makes you sort of yeah, it b- brings you in on the joke. I it like does. that. Yeah, and what kind of atmosphere there was when the movie was being made? Surely this was fun. You know, how, how, was it was it as much of a party on set as it seemed like it might be? Yeah. Oh, it, always. Especially because a we were we've done we've already been together and we loved the first one so much and the two Jasons, Sadekis have done now four films with Bateman. Three and I've known him for 25 plus years, so there's a lot of familiarity amongst the all of us anyway. And so, you ha- what can you do? You d- can't help but just have the time of your life, and then just try to out giggle each other, <laughs> see who can break first. And also, judging from the outtakes, it did seem like uh, there was a lot of ad libbing going on, if allowed or not. Was that the case? I think with the boys, way more. But with with me and, and, and Bateman in our opening scene, we definitely had a couple takes where we just were able to throw out whatever came to our twisted little minds. Now, of course, you play Dr. Julia Harris, who yes. has a bit of a potty mouth. You're aware of that phrase, aren't you? The potty mouth phrase. Yeah, she has a little bit of a potty mouth. I, I mean, I don't think she thinks so, but yes. I uh, can understand how it could be perceived that way. So, so has, has your family watched this film? They, have they watched the last film? What do they think of this? this? They do. They're quite entertained by it. They have a great sense of humor. So they're they're not sitting there kind of, oh my goshing and 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 how could you dare do that and disgrace our family like that? <laughs> they're actors, you know. So they they thought it was quite fantastic. Uh, and are you happy to say to the producers and the writers? Push me further. Come on, let's. We're in the shadows here, but I want to get. I want to get dirty black here. Oh, for sure. And that actually was one of the questions when we started into the, you know, the writing process. Sean Anders and John Morris were like, "How far can we go?" Just uh, respectfully, and I said, "You take it as far as you want it, and we'll just, <laughs> just go as far as you can." Far easier to pull back, I think, than push up. Yeah, it's like it's it's like it's easier to you know shorten something than to uh, try to lengthen it. And the plot though, the plot is stupidly outrageous, though, isn't yeah, it? It makes sure. no sense at all, does it? <laughs> no, but it somehow <laughs> does. All right, from the movie Horrible Bosses Two, uh, this from Toto. Hold the line, please do, and we'll be right back with you, caller. Toto, hold the line from Horrible Bosses Two out today. Where's Jennifer Aniston stars. But what about her best boss? My best boss, yes, was uh, a man named Kimo. It was a restaurant that I worked at in New York City when I was struggling. 
it was called Jackson Hole Hamburger, and it was a burger joint. <laughs> and I was the wait hostess and a waitress. Mm -hmm. And he, every time I got some little off Broadway play or some sort of a showcase thing, he would always let me go for whatever period of time, sometimes oh. a week, sometimes two months, sometimes three months, and he'd say, your job is always here, which, because I needed it, because <laughs> nothing lasted that long. That was, he was just, he was great. And have you ever been a boss? Are you a boss now? Honestly? I am a boss now, yeah. Okay, who'd you boss? I boss a lot of people around. <laughs> Anybody I possibly can. Do you have a company? Do you have employees? I do. I have a company. I have, uh, I have wonderful employees. I'm really lucky. I've got an extraordinary group of really committed, awesome people. And do you have Employee of the Month and different things like that going we on? We actually used to. We, <laughs> they actually started doing that amongst themselves, which was really funny. There was like an eight, right when you walked into the office, there was an eight by ten on, on the little desk, and they would change out who they felt was the employee of that month. Okay, how you Wasn't it? left up to me. See how good of a boss I am? I just leave that all up to them. Do you have an Elvis Day? Do I have a what? An Elvis Day. What's that? Well, sometimes some companies have Elvis days. You come in on Friday, you dress like Elvis. It cheers everyone up for a while. Oh, I don't know if that would cheer us <laughs> up. <laughs> that would kind of depress me a little bit. Um, Young Elvis or older Elvis? Mostly Hawaiian Elvis, I understand. Ah. That's where you, have, have you ever had to fire anyone? Yeah. How are you with that? Terrible. <laughs> it's the worst thing in the world. Oh, no. I had to do it one time. T tell us how you approach that, please. Just honesty and, and kindness and a, a lot of apologies. Did I you mean, it's never like firing because you screwed up and how dare you and you're fired. It was never anything like that. It was usually just because it, it wasn't working out. And did you sit down and say, I think we need to have a talk? What was your opening? Yeah. You, your opening line is so important in that situation, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think it was, you know, I think I've, I've been thinking a lot about it and I just don't think this is a great fit. Mm. It's kind of like a boyfriend conversation. Oh too. no, let's not go. Let's not go there, Jennifer. No. Please. All right. Well, listen. It's great to talk to you. Uh, good luck with the, the rest of this uh, shenanigans. Thank you, the wonderful Jennifer Aniston. Thank you so much. Goodbye. You're listening to the Chris Evans Breakfast Show on BBC Radio Two. Are you right? Place your head on my beating heart. Oh, I love Thinking that song. The more I hear it, the more I love it, and I love it to start with. So where does that leave me? We found love. Ed Sheeran and Thinking Out Loud, 8.25, BBC Radio 2 here, Friday morning guest day. You've had Jennifer Aniston. Still to come, first aid kit, our singing songbirds from Sweden. Lewis Hamilton. But joining us now, what about this? A beloved ballerina who spent over 20 years performing to acclaim across the globe. She's now watched by millions each weekend, more than ever before, dishing out top tips on Strictly Come Dancing. Please welcome Darcy Bustle. Morning, Darcy. Good morning. How are yes. you today? Very well. It's Friday. What well, excitement. It is Friday, of course. <laughs> See, we all sort of chill out on a Friday. We're landing, you know. Oh, no, I'm just our, starting. Our plane's coming into land. <laughs> How does it feel today for you? Um, um, well, no, it's very exciting to know what's gonna we're gonna have for the weekend and the expectation of how they're gonna perform. Um, but we've got a great team, so they never fail to disappoint us. So we have a great time. They never fail not to disappoint you. <laughs> That's what you meant to say, isn't it? <laughs> never fail to disappoint us. Yeah, no, not to disappoint <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> so I to check that. That'd be all the papers today. Dar Darcy and Strictly Always ripped. disappointed, yeah. <laughs> all right, are you followed around by photographers nowadays and things like that, being on the biggest show on TV? Um, yeah, no, not really. I mean, I, I, I so it get surprised in places, but generally, um, no, not really followed. It's bizarre, though, that you know, from a profile point of view, yes. you're now of a much higher profile than you ever were as a ballerina. I know, it's quite disappointing, really, isn't it? It's bizarre. <laughs> and I'm not even doing my job. It's so freaky. <laughs> Okay, so you you just said to me off air that the, the the celebs are getting on better than ever this year. Mm. And it's a really fun place to be. It's a lovely um, atmosphere. Yeah. We're down to four girls and three boys, if you count Frankie as a girl, which she is. But if you just read her Sorry? name, on... well, <laughs> I, think, I think generally we do count. Frankie no, but if you read her name on paper and you don't know, no, she's you, you might no. think she's a boy. No, really? no, Chris, Chris, she's definitely a girl. No, she's... I'm saying if you read her okay, name on paper or whatever. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now, if you had to, if you had to just knock one or two out, um, and you're going to have to do that right now. Ooh. Okay, who would you go for? In my top three, uh, well, I no, don't know. Say no, that, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to give you a knockout competition. A knockout. <laughs> Can we go for who would, who would you choose over on past performances, Jake or Simon? Very difficult. Mm. Very very difficult. But it had to be Jake. Would it have to be Jake? 
Is it the hips? Um, he's just so surprising. I just like somebody who's so unpredictable. You never know what he's going to do. How, he just takes a different take on every dance he does, but he brings so many other things into the, the technique of the dance. It's not just about the dancing. But from an improval <laughs> point of view, I mean, Simon is, is just... Oh, my God, he's just elevated. Natural. Yes, and uh, he's just... Uh, he's got this wonderful belief now. He's enjoying every minute of it instead of being terrified. And he was terrified before. And it is wonderful to see. And, and he is, he's got everything. Or well, every bit is working <laughs> for God, me. You love it, don't you? You absolutely well, no, love he's it. So, you know, when you've got a body and a physicality, but he has so I, much. I know, Darcy. I know. I know. It's I'm so lovely. very aware of that myself, of course. <laughs> so between the popsters, if you had to choose uh, on past performances, up yes. to date now, uh, we've got mm. three shows left, mm. down to the final seven mm. uh, celebs, between the popsters, Pixie Lot and Frankie, who would you go for? No idea. They're, they're on a par. They're very really? difficult to choose from, mm. actually, because, yeah, no, I like both of those. Carolina is a, a, a sparky one. She's very bubbly, and she has this amazing sort of dynamics when she gets on that dance floor. She, again, is slightly unpredictable, but very strong in the Latin. But then you have somebody like Mark Wright, again, who could just blow them all away as well. He's yeah, just it's unusual. Very exciting. The standard has now gone, it's sort of clicked into just brilliant now. Yeah. It? It's, it's normally like uh, the last, the penultimate show, but <laughs> it's already like a final, which is it, very exciting. I think you're right. I think it's exactly that. Um, I, uh, you know, they're, I don't know how they're going to outdo each other. Did I, you hear that, Lynn? <laughs> I'm right. Chris, it's exactly that. Chris Evans is right. Shop. Yeah, Darcy <laughs> just Darcy, said. could you Come not and join a, us up on the deck. Please don't make a habit of doing that, because oh, he'll really? be impossible. Oh, no, really. He will be impossible. going to inflate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, again. And so, the, between the Sunday, Sunday show and the Saturday show, mm. as we see it on telly, we all know it's on the same night. Yes. We all know you pretend that it isn't. <laughs> yes, yes, what, right. do you, what do you do in between the two shows? Do you, do you, do you go out for a, 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 pre, a mid-show cocktail, you and the other well, judges? Well, that would or? be nice. There's nowhere to go, really. No, um... Um, there's a tent, and we, we have a nice drink in the tent often. Um, there's a tent? Yeah, there's a tent outside the studio. You go to a tent? <laughs> where the bar is, and where we get fed. Really? Yes, yes. No, See, it's you'd special. You'd never think that, would you? It's so glitzy <laughs> no, 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 and glamorous. It's the so, glamour. If the thing about it's a nice it's, shiny white tent. But it's so it's indoors. It's an old boy scout it? camp tent. <laughs> you don't think of the outdoors at all. Yeah, it's cold as well. Is it? Yeah. Do they have heaters difficult. in there for you? <laughs> no, they do have heaters. You've just folded your arms talking about it. Oh, really oh, oh, oh. <laughs> all right, Darcy, must are sticking with us. You are sticking with us, aren't you, Darcy? Yes, okay, please. great. BBC Radio Here's Arlene. Uh, right, the You're answer. listening to the Chris Evans Breakfast Show. Here on BBC Radio 2. All right. Darcy's still with us, and she can confirm that by saying hello. Hello. Yeah, good hello. Morning. Good morning, everyone. And Darcy has already met Lewis Hamilton, oh, yes, in Ooh. Monaco. Yeah, I'm tired. Right, to... you've had Jennifer Aniston, and now we have uh, some Swedish songsters, or songstresses, uh, from uh, whereabouts? Is Stockholm? Are you Stockholm girls? Yes. Okay. Yes. How do we say good morning in Swedish? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Very Scandinavian this week. We've had the Norwegians on earlier on. They were very nice. Yeah. How do yeah. you feel about Norway, you two? We love it. Yeah. They're like happier, happier yeah. version of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's very honest. Yeah. Okay. Well, they, well, they sound happier at least. When they speak. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Fake it till you make it, though. That's what they oh, say. I, I mean, I don't know, but. I believe that's, that. That's what yeah. I'm hearing. No. Um, so, so if, if, if Norway are a happier version of you guys, and you're pretty happy anyhow, as to mm-hmm. be said, the Swedes, where, where did Denmark fit into this equation? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> okay, I think that answers the question. Thank you very much indeed. First aid kit. OK, you're going to play four songs for us today. What are you going to kick off with first? Emily. Yes. All right, Emily. Thank you very much. First aid kit. Here we go. Round of applause. <laughs> Johanna Soderberg and Clara Soderberg. I'm presuming your sisters. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What a genius, you see? <laughs> right there. Okay, now Lewis Hamilton 
is going to be on the show right now, but he's not going to be here in person. He was going to be, uh, but he woke up this morning with the lurgy, the genuine lurgy, as you will hear in a moment or two. Often happens, uh, you work like a dog all year, you go for your annual break, and then you're knocked down like a sack of spuds. He's got tonsillitis, but he's coming on the phone to talk to us. Good morning, Lewis. Good morning, Chris. I'm so sorry you feel so under the weather. Oh, uh, Chris, I, you know, I've been so excited to, to come and meet you and, and <laughs> speak, about, speak about cars and everything. I'm so sorry to all your team. And no, it's team. all right. Uh, but thank you so much for having me. Well, Lewis, you're very welcome to come back. We had, a, we had loads of questions to ask you. I'm just going to ask you a couple. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah. give the listeners questions to you because they're the most important people. So just a, just a couple of questions if you don't mind, all right? Definitely, definitely. OK, Joe Close, uh, she says, Do you wear lucky pants on race day? Excellent. <laughs> I don't. Um, actually, I don't actually uh, wear normal. You don't wear any underwear. You wear uh, like a like thermal long johns. You have to wear. So I don't have any lucky things like that now. All right, uh, Darcy's perked up. Oh, I've got to listen to it. You don't. <laughs> you don't wear any underwear well, at all. No, but years years ago, I used to have uh, a lucky pair of boxer shorts, but my mum shrunk them, so I could never wear them again. All right. <laughs> Oh, Mum. OK, morning, Mum, morning. Uh, right, now, if you could pick a teammate, Lewis, uh, from any time in F1 history, and it can't be Senna and it can't be Nico either because they're too easy for you because we think you'd go for one of those, who would it be if you could pick a teammate? Um, then I would say probably um, Gilles Villeneuve. Gilles Villeneuve. OK, tell us why. Um, I just know he had an incredible car control. He was, he was great at directing the car. I, I, I think he was phenomenal, so I would have loved to have of competing against him. All right, OK. Now, there was this brilliant um, documentary on BBC4 after your race finished on Sunday about Jim Clark, Jim Clark, the quiet champion, and also with you now, one of our um, four UK double world champions. And uh, he said in that documentary, he said he didn't try and drive faster than other drivers. He just concentrated harder, and that made him faster. How come you can go quicker? Where do you go quicker than other drivers? How how do you do it? I think for me, it's it started from the the first day I started racing. You know, when, when I was go karting around Wright House, my dad used to going he used to go and stand on the corner uh, and see where the, for example, the British champion at the time, uh, he'd see where he was braking, and then he would walk a few meters later and say that I have the brake there. And um, time and time again, I'd come in and I'd I'd hit the brakes, spin off. I landed in the pond several times. <laughs> And eventually I got that, so I became the latest of breakers. And that's really where a ton of the time is on, on the breaks. All right. so that's, really, that's really where it all come from. So breakers, ladies, you dare. Another question here from a listener. If you were running McLaren, who would you keep next year alongside Alonso? Kevin Magnussen or Jensen Button? Uh, both, in, both really, really nice guys. And obviously Kevin, it's only his first year, so he's got lots to learn still, but he's done a great job this year. Um, but of, of course, if you're developing a, a, a new engine, particularly uh, with that team, I think Jensen has all the experience. I think he's a, he's a great asset for a team like that. So in that position, so if yeah, I personally would have would keep him. Plus, he's he's a an existing champ or a champion from the past, so you know that he's he's going to bring the goods. And he's a Brit. And he's a Brit. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right, now, I'll let you go in a second or two. What we did last night also, no we fielded um, some questions from your colleagues in Formula One. Are you ready for these? <laughs> yeah, go for it. OK, Ross Braun uh, says, Lewis, how would you like to see F1 develop in the future? That's a good question. I don't know, Ross. Uh, you know, I think I miss the sound. I'm sure the fans do. I remember... I remember um, the good thing is that technology is evolving all the time, obviously, with... with the development that we have with the Curse Pack, the big battery pack that's on the car, we're developing that technology, which nowadays you're seeing a lot of that in the, in the hybrid technology on the cars, on road cars. Um, I'm really I'm proud to be a part of helping develop technology for sure, but I think there's always, we always, always have to be the pinnacle of motorsport. It would be great to see more teams closer at the top, you know, seeing Ferrari, seeing McLaren, seeing Williams, because I think fans want to see a, a bit of a mixture, you know. So as a racer, I want to be racing other team, uh, other teams. Would you ever consider um, lining up for the following race in reverse positions of how you finished the last race? Because that would be brilliant, wouldn't it? 
I think that would be pretty cool, yeah. Uh, what they do that with GP2, so you have two races. Wherever you finish in the first one, they reverse the top eight. Um, and I don't think that's a bad thing. And I think it makes it extremely exciting. It's just, in Formula 1, it's so hard to... It's so hard to follow and to overtake. So it's, you know, of course, with us this year in our car, we would for sure have been able to fight the guys ahead. But uh, sometimes you get to some tracks and it's, it's just like a, it's just a train. You know, Monaco is just a train of cars. You know, yeah, yeah. you qualify is where you finish almost. All right, from Adrian, from Adrian Newey, I know you know and respect Adrian very much, the genius F1 designer. He says, uh, last night he sent us this question, Ayrton Senna obviously made a huge impression on you when you were a kid. Why and how did that help you, or uh, help to make you the driver you are today? Um, I think it's, I watched a lot of the way he drove. Um, I was always watching the, the footage of, of how he drove. I knew, he, I know he was a late breaker. Um, I, I'm always described as an aggressive driver. And uh, I, I think I always aspired to be like him. So I was always pushing, um, push the boundaries of the car to, in, in a different way than, than others do. And he was just an all-round incredible driver. So I was just watching him in detail. And also the way he carried himself. Um, I used to come back and watch his video every day. So I saw it thousands of times. And, um, you know, and I always wanted to emulate him. All right. Uh, we have a question here from Christian Horner. Here we go. Actually, he's asked three questions, Lewis. Ready for these? <laughs> yeah, go for it. OK. I'm going to ask the, all three questions at once and then back over to you. Question number one, when are you getting married? Question number two, <laughs> can you please sing Don't You Wish Your Boyfriend Was Hot Like Me? And number three, for Christ's sake, can you please slow down? <laughs> um, number three, no. Um... <laughs> So the first one um, is going to be be a while after him, <laughs> after he gets married. Okay. Um, and then the middle one, what was that one, or the second one? Can you please sing Don't You Wish Your Boyfriend Was Hot Like Me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I'm sure he likes to sing about the spice <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know there's a lot of spice talk in the pits nowadays. All uh, right, yeah. uh, also we did contact Ron Dennis. Ron said... I don't have a question for Lewis, but I just want him to enjoy his second world championship and have a great time over Christmas. What a lovely thing that is to say, isn't it? Oh, that's, a, that's great. You know, I'm very, very fortunate to have been supported by Ron for so many years since I met him when I was 10, so that's, that's, that's really kind of him. All right, now this is pathetic, Lewis. Um, I was really personally looking forward to coming in today for totally selfish reasons because... I haven't asked for an autograph for years from anyone. I can't remember the last time I asked someone for an autograph. But I actually brought in my car for you to autograph today. And it's outside. Oh, which car did you bring in? I bought, brought in a 1970s silver Mercedes. Of course oh, I had to. Oh, um, so if you, Chris, I know, I know you have some incredible cars. <laughs> so I really would love to catch up. Well, one day with you... Because you... I'm, I'm trying to become a collector like you. All right. Well, we can have a chat about that um, when, when you throw it's better because I really don't want to catch anything because I have to be able to speak uh, next week a bit. <laughs> sure, but, you know, you, but you know what? Uh, if you ever need someone to teach, teach you how to actually drive the cars that you have, just let me know. Um, I'm all right, actually, Lewis. I'm, I'm, done, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, no, but if, if you teach me. Uh, one day, if you could sign my car, that'd be great. Listen, get well soon. It's, it's a real bummer that you, you've, you've fallen ill after such a great uh, weekend and a great season. Um, have a great Christmas and come and see us whenever you can. I would love to. Thank you so right. much, Chris. Appreciate it. Lewis Hamilton. There you go. Well done, Lewis. Happy Friday. Happy days. I can Tina, number city limits on BBC Radio 2. So, you've had Jennifer Aniston, you've had Lewis Hamilton from his sick bed. Lewis, I'll oh, bless you. The answering champion, even under the weather, says Fliss. My husband, Lewis Hamilton, had his 63rd birthday on t the 23rd of November when Lewis won his World Championship. Please thank Lewis for making it very special. Uh, it says Janet and Lewis Hamilton. That's lovely, isn't it? OK, good morning. Welcome to the programme. Uh, still with us, Darcy Buster. Say, Darcy, now, how busy is your Friday? Um, yeah, no, I'm just preparing myself for the weekend. <laughs> do, do you think about what you're going to say? Do you think about stock phrases that could come in handy? No, I don't. I've got to say, I think Len does, because they're, they're, they're almost too well, clever, they're too witty. They're beautiful, aren't they? They're gorgeous. I, I do. Because he has that little notepad, doesn't he? We all have a notepad. Oh, do you really? Oh, yeah. But we're, we're writing, you know, what we see. Okay, and are they company supplied notepads? Are they all the same? Or They're you... all the same. <laughs> okay. Do you ever do you ever sneak a look at lens? 
Um, no, he does a very faint pencil. Does it on purpose? I think so. All right. Because I love snooping. Okay, and because no. you, you're bookended by Len on your left and Craig, Craig on your yes. right. Do, 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 you, do, you, do you feel like you're missing out on enough Bruno? No, because he kind <laughs> of jumps over the top of Len very easily. You, you get all of that energy from him. It's amazing. It kind of just flows through Len bounces off me and then hits Craig, I think. See, but I love Craig. Craig's, Craig's not my favourite. No, no offence to you whatsoever, but I just, I think he's... Because he, he used to be really nasty. Now he's just really firm but fair, don't you yeah, think? Yeah, no, I think. I've rubbed off on him, haven't I? Yeah, but you do <laughs> give him a look sometimes. I have to give him a look. He does the weirdest things sometimes. Though. Like what, for example? Well, just giving a really low mark for saying something quite, you know, nice and like, you know, you're getting somewhere and positive and then he gives them a four. <laughs> Which go, doesn't make any sense at all. What was all that about? Yeah, but you'd rather have Cra- a Craig Four than a Donny Ten. Oh my God, yes. Wouldn't you? <laughs> oh yes, that was very strange. <laughs> People nearly marched on the BBC because Donny Osmond was allowed to give out marks. Fine, have him on the panel. <laughs> Fine, let him. You know, but say- he was very gracious. He said, "He said, look, it's my one chance. Why not? You know." And I said, "Fair, fair. You know, you're not coming back on." Ever. <laughs> good, good. And, um, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're looking at what Len's saying and when you're thinking about uh, what Craig's up to, you, I often see you all in your peripheral vision, well, a bit more than that, otherwise it wouldn't be peripheral. Sne- you do tend to sneak a look at which way your Marking. fellow judges' paddles yes, are under the table. Yeah. Why did you do that? Well, because we're all, I don't know, we just want to see where we're going with it, you know. I, I, I think you just want to know how far off Craig is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, have, you ever under, have you ever gone lower than Craig, marking-wise? Um, no, once. I'm come close to being with him, mm. but I could never go that low. All right, and have you ever had the paddle... On, a, on an 8 or a 7, and at the last minute flipped it to a different score? No, no. Honestly? You, no, no, honestly. I, I do panic. <laughs> I have my panic. I usually do that. I panic in the dance-off more. Do you? Yeah, when, when you have to sign somebody off, and I, that's when I, I'm like, oh, no, that one, that one, this one. I don't know. All right. That's uh, the, the hardest bit. The Soderbergh <laughs> sisters from Sweden, from Stockholm, are behind you. First aid kits, very own Soderbergh sisters. Uh, are you aware of Strictly You Two Girls? I shouldn't think they are. Do you know what we're talking about? <laughs> yes. <laughs> one of you does, one of you doesn't. You know, you know. Well, I think so. It's like Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, yeah we yeah. have that in Sweden too. Yeah. What's, yeah. It, what's it called in Sweden? Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Well, let's, it? let's Dance. Well, let's Dance. Yeah, it's called Let's Dance. Is that the same programme or is that yeah, a different it's, it's, franchise? I No, it's usually Dancing with the Stars when it's franchise, but maybe... I think it's the same. It it's exactly the, well, it's same, exactly the same concept. Do you get as excited yeah. about it as we do? Yes. <laughs> it's, no, I mean it's it's really it's a really big show. Okay, for sure. What do you think of our Darcy? She's like our only female judge, isn't she great? I am the only female. How sad is that? Don't you think? Yeah. So? There should be more, shouldn't there? She, she absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I, like the, I like it. I like the fact that you're just the one. You're the one there. Really? Well, you're ruling the roost. <laughs> you're the queen bee. This is your friend David Williams, and it's my job to tell you you're listening to the Chris Evans Breakfast Show on BBC Radio Two. Can I go now? First aid kit are going to finish off the show today with Waterloo Sunset. What a laugh! That's going to be apparently it's brilliant. Our producers <laughs> heard it. But before all that, with uh, the guitar, yeah, with the guitar <laughs> plugged in and being tuned as we speak with the capo and everything. Uh, writer Abdul of Remen Manics here. Good morning, Abdul. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Very well. I'm sorry about last week. It's all right. It's okay. Lewis Hamilton didn't turn up this week. You didn't turn up last week. I'm getting used I, to I'm it. In, I'm, in, I'm in good. And, and Chris, this is my last pause for thought until the new year because I'm, because I'm off. So I, I come bearing gifts. Oh, well, that's all right then. An early, an early Christmas present for you. All right. Well, I'm going to open And this. Turkish sweets for the, for the crew Turkish from sweets. my favorite bakery in Dalston. Do you know Turkish Delight is originally from Scarborough? I don't believe that, Chris. <laughs> I don't believe it's it. True. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. As, by the way, is um, it's not Frankenstein. Uh, Dracula's from Scarborough well, as well. This is Baklava, he? so. Whitby. Okay. There you just, go. Just down the coast. All right, well, we'll open the pressing a bit after we've focused on your pause for thought today. Thank you, Chris. Chris, when I knew I was going to be in the same studio as the dance legend Darcy Bustle, I was instantly hit by memories of my own predictably embarrassing dancing misadventures. Of the many words I could use to describe myself, elegant would not be among them. Oh. And a certain elegance is required when it comes to dancing. <laughs> I remember my grade 8 prom, dressed in as fine a suit as my parents could muster. I spent most of the night asserting my right to sit down. I rebuffed every entreaty to join the dance. 
Finally, as the night was drawing to a close, I was forcibly dragged onto the dance floor. Come on, Abdul, they roared. I didn't know what to do, so I began to nervously hop up and down. <laughs> they, they looked at me, shrugged their shoulders, and started doing the same. We finished the night hopping around the darkened gymnasium. They dubbed the dance the Malik Hop. Darcy, I'm sure it would have received a rather low score on the Strictly scale, but my friends were terribly kind. I, on the other hand, was dreadfully awkward. I grew up with the poetry of the great mystic Baba Bule Shah. Expressed in melodic Punjabi, this was the verse of a spiritual rebel railing against the empty pieties and hypocrisies of clerics. Bule Shah sought God in alleyways and gutters. Amongst the ignored and the impoverished, he found a faith which healed, gave hope, and above all, offered joy. Overwhelmed by the beauty of it all, he was ecstatic. Your love, Bulisha exclaimed to God, has made me dance, dance like mad. I admit that I too, in the gather <laughs> gatherings of modern-day mystics and the odd wedding, have occasionally found my groove. I have learned to move without care for others, but to find in the words and music a movement and a moment when my body acts to a divine rhythm. My son loves to dance, on the other hand. He finds the beat quickly, and like a live wire, he begins to bounce about, twirl and whirl. He hums and whirs and makes up his own words to the songs. If he catches my eye, he'll run over. Let's dance, Abba! I grab his hands and do my, mess, uh, do my best to match his joie de vivre. I pray he never loses it. Perhaps it's time I taught him the Malik Hop. Yes, I think so, don't you? <laughs> can, can you just sneakily, Darcy, can you give the Malik Hop a 10? Just give it a 10, go. Uh, well, yeah, whatever. I have, okay, it's a 10. Thank ten. you. Thank <laughs> you. Don't, don't do it. I would like to see it. You can know, we, it, we would all like to see it, actually, wouldn't we? I think that the, it, it, it just, it really is, it really is a chair? direct up and down. It's like a whoop, whoop. Yeah. A little bunny hop. It's very it really sophisticated. Like a, you can't like see a bunny it hop, basically. <laughs> very <laughs> elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Warrington, A50, Orford Road, uh, close in both directions. There's been an accident. One vehicle involved. It's between uh, Birchwood Road and Oakwood Avenue. We've had some delays on the M1 travelling north. Junction 29 to 30, Chesterfield through to Barbara. There was a breakdown there. Good news from the M25, though. It's all open again. There was a breakdown. It's been removed. That was on the approach to the tunnel. Back with more in about 20 minutes. All right, so it's actually like wasn't invented in Scarborough, but it was named in Britain. OK, so you've got to give me that one at least. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you to Lewis Hamilton for being on the show today. Live from his sick bed, he will come in again uh, one day to talk to us. We got through as many of your questions as we could. Uh, thank you so much, Darcy, for being here. Darcy, a joy as always. No, thank you. Have a great Christmas. What are you doing for Christmas, by the way? Going to Miami. Miami, baby! <laughs> All right. Have you told the family? <laughs> <laughs> they are coming. Right. just can't take the dogs. So. Thanks to Jennifer Aniston <laughs> for being here this morning. Uh, thank you to the people who've worked hardest, as always. Our musical guest today, First Aker. You've been brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. And not just the ladies. Uh, who are your gentlemen you have with you today? We have Nicholas Lindstrom on the drums. Hi, and Nicholas. And Melvin Duffy on electric guitar and pedal steel. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. Okay, let's open this present from Abdul. Okay, it, it's a book. Okay, it's Darcy's life story. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Oh my goodness, Persiana recipes from the Middle East and beyond. I love you, Abdul. I already did. I love you even more now. Thank you. Oh, thank you for the lovely sentiments in your card as well. Okay, great week on the Breakfast Show. Thank you so much. We'll see you on Monday for the first. Of December, Christmas is here, kids, and now we have first day kit playing us out. Where and you have the Kinks Waterloo Sunset, yes. Gee whiz, here we go. Playing us Evans in there somewhere. I can hardly hear him. And on 88 to 91 FM, BBC Radio 2.